Next up, I would like to introduce Emily Kime. Emily is the Vice President for Communications for the Junior League. She joined the Junior League of Phoenix in Phoenix, I'm sorry, in May of 2019 as a transfer from the Dallas League. She served in various committees during her career in the Junior League, from donor development to provisional advisor to marketing and communications, including last year when she served as vice chair of the digital market uh, digital media committee. Emily also currently serves on the board of directors for the Junior League of Phoenix Foundation. Welcome, Emily. Thank you so much, Jill. Such a pleasure to be here and speak with you all. I'm really excited to talk with you all on communications, marketing, and branding. So without further ado, let's kick it off. Okay, so first things first, I just wanna talk with you all uh, about our three committees under the communications and marketing team. So of course, um, myself as the vice president, I do oversee these three committees and all of our committees work really, really closely together. So firstly, our digital media committee oversees all of those Junior League of Phoenix digital communications on social, web, email, and we even do Google ads now, which is very exciting. More details to come on that later. Marketing development oversees all of the development of all of the marketing collateral that you'll see. So that's brochures, flyers, various event packets, sponsorship packets, and of course the year in review and annual report that we re release at the end of every junior league year. And last but not least, our awesome public branding committee oversees the public branding, of course, and all of the media relations for the Junior League of Phoenix, managing our brand reputation, brand standards, and of course, the merchandising that you would see in the Junior League of Phoenix store. So moving on to the next slide. So just in general, what we do, well, um, as I summarized our committees, we're responsible for all of those external and internal communications for the Junior League of Phoenix. As you can imagine, that is a lot of material to get out, not only to our public community, but to all of our members as well. I definitely don't want any members to feel siloed or like they don't know what's going on. So it's a really big job to make sure that we are all on board and making sure we know everything that's going on. I personally love uh, this role and being on this committee because we do get to see a glimpse into everything that the um, you know other committees are working on and that we can share all of that out to other members that they might find helpful and interesting. So of course, um, the roles are very strategic. We wanna increase the brand awareness of the Junior League of Phoenix. We wanna increase membership interest and also interest with our community partners. And of course, hopefully some investment opportunities for the Junior League of Phoenix. And going forward onto our next slide, I just want to touch a little bit on our personal 2021-2022 focuses. Um, this is actually part of our strategic annual review, which can be found on the forms and docs. And this one is specific to the communications and marketing team. But I did want to highlight a few things that our committees are going to be focusing on this year. One of those is a fully functional data platform. I talked a little bit. I mentioned Google Ads. We're actually exploring uh, serving some Google ads, display ads to try to increase not only like membership awareness, but awareness for, for example, the rummage annual sale, which we did not get to have last year, of course, but this year, upcoming year, we're super, super excited for the rummage sale. So Google ads is a really great opportunity for the Junior League of Phoenix to help leverage, hopefully more interest in the sale, letting the community know it's still going on. So for example, having that fully functional data platform set up through Google Analytics is super great. Of course, we have a lot of marketing campaigns that we constantly run to try to increase brand awareness. We want to increase more followers on all of our social media platforms, not only for our members' Facebook page and blog subscribers, but also we really want to get the public more interested in the Junior League of Phoenix and what we're doing. So to me personally, I love LinkedIn. I think it's a great platform that we want to leverage more. And that's where a lot of community partners and other you know, potential investors for the league are on LinkedIn. So lots of opportunities there. So again, we're always interested in new ideas. So just even if you're not on the marketing and communications committee, 
we're, I'm super, I'm super open and I love uh, collaboration. And so I always encourage anyone to please submit any ideas that you have to me and also any content you want to see, we can go on to our next slide. It's the perfect segue into our communications request form. I could talk about this until I'm blue in the face, but our communications request form is the best way that you can get anything fun that's going on in the league member wise or anything with like your community partners that you want to share. We want to know anything and everything as relates to what's going on with your committees. Even if you might think that it could be insignificant or information that you might not think people are interested in, I promise you, there's definitely a lot of information that we could share more about, even like successes with other members. If they joined like another board outside of the Junior League of Phoenix, we want to celebrate those successes of our members. We want to uplift others. And we also want to share anything that's going on in the community that would be really relevant to our league members. So I highly encourage you all to submit communications request forms. Anyone can submit them, not just leaders, but you as leaders, what you can do is encourage your teams constantly that, you know, marketing communications team is here to help. Even if you're stuck, like I have no idea, for example, when I want to post this, how I want to post it, where I want to post it, or um, if, is there a copy that we can create graphics? The marketing and communications team can help you guys with all of that. So seriously, no fret. Even if you have very minimal information, uh, we're here to help with that. Kind of related is this photo release form. It's something that I really want to mention is that with um, internal members, it's not necessarily an issue because all of us do our placement contracts and our confidentiality forms where we're essentially agreeing to be in photos featured on social media. But especially if we're going to be taking photos at community events or especially events that contain uh, children or minors, we definitely want to make sure that we're all uh, fulfilling these photo release forms and that we have the proper releases because the last thing we want to do is post something on social that somebody did not give us permission to post. So the marketing and communications team will absolutely help with that and remind, but it is just a friendly reminder to be mindful. If you do want to take some photos and share them, it's probably a good idea to make sure we have that in place. And going on to a little bit more of our communications and branding must-haves for the league, JLP logos, community and fundraising logos, and our fabulous style guide and communications manual, which I'm hoping to update a little bit more this year. These are all on our forms and docs, and it's amazing resources for you all. If you don't feel like reaching out or you need something in a pinch, which of course I'm always available if somebody just needs something super quickly or has a question. Style guide is great. It talks about fonts to use, brand colors, any kind of branding guidelines, as well as things like how do we punctuate AM and PM and what are the date formats that we should use? I do try to strive for all of our communications, at least um, outputted by our communications and marketing team and by the league to be all uniform. Um, it, of course, gives us a great reputation and makes us look really professional and buttoned up. So we're here to help with that to make sure that everything looks really, really great. Um, all of these are on forms and docs. Again, if there's any questions, we're here to help craft copy, determine audiences, cadence of posting things on social. No idea is too small or too large. So we're here to help. And that's all I wanted to talk about today. And I did want to open it up if there was any questions for me. If not, please feel free to reach out to me directly. Uh, my, you can reach out to my personal email, which is on digital cheetah or jlp.news at jlp.org. I'll pin that in the chat. That is my email and all of uh, the lovely ladies that are chair and our vice chair of digital media, we're happy to reach out and help. Thanks so much. Thank you, Emily. Kristen, Nikki, any questions in the chat at this moment? We have one question. Wonderful. And the question is, how far in advance should we complete the communications request form? Oh, that's an excellent question. Thank you so much for asking. So as soon as you have enough information, it's ideal to just submit it whenever possible. I would say the least amount of time, for example, for emails, we have a news we will use that we do send out the 15th of the month and then the 30th or 31st of the month, depending on what the last day is. So at least I would say a week in advance of those emails, if possible. We, of course, also have that impact email. That is an external facing email. The news you will use is internal, just FYI, in case you didn't know that. Um, for social media, 
Um, if you have an event, ideally weeks before is great because we can schedule a cadence of posts and friendly reminders. We can get those out. But if you have something last minute that you want to get out, 24 to 48 hours is totally okay. You can reach out to me directly and I can work with, for example, if it's something for social, I can work with the digital media chair and vice chair to make sure we get something out. But uh, as soon as possible is great. And again, even if you know something is upcoming and you don't quite have all the details, feel free to shoot me an email or even submit that communications request form and just give me a heads up because we can make sure to plan for that and I can follow back up with you. Uh, the next question we have is, if we want something to be posted a few times on Facebook, do we need to put, submit multiple requests or can it be done in one request? Great question. That can all just be in one communications request form. Definitely not going to make you submit multiple requests. You can just specify in your comment, oh, I'd love for this to be posted a few times. And if you have any preferences on like, for example, a week before or a re reminder the day before, we usually recommend that anyway. But uh, just just put a little note in there saying that you'd like for something to be uh, shared multiple times. I actually like to recommend that we have different versions of say graphics, for example, or differing copy so that we keep it a little bit interesting because I find that yes, while, while you may look at something multiple times, it's good, you know, muscle memory for your brain, but you start to over overlook that a little bit. So just kind of switching that up and we're here to help with all of that. I love the questions. Thanks so much. Any more questions? I think that's all we have right now. Thank you, Emily. Awesome. Well, Thanks, Emily, I have one question for you. Yes. And that is, can you give us an example of when we would use the impacts versus what we would include in the impact versus what we would include in a news you will, you will use versus an email blast? Yes, absolutely, Jill. Great question. So for our news we will use, for example, that's our member facing email. Those are things like, for example, GMM reminder or the fantasy football event that's coming up membership appreciation. I'm looking at you. So those are some things that we want to get out to our um, internal members. Also like updated COVID policy, things like that. Any kind of other member specific reminders like pay your dues, for example, uh, for the impact Things you would want to communicate for the impact are things that you'd want to communicate to the public because it's external. So that would be any pertinent information about the rummage sale or, um, you know, community partner information, things like that, that we want to get out. We also do out of, um, communicate on the impact, sometimes announcements about uh, members and really exciting information, such as every year, whenever we have, you know, a new um, you know, management team or every, every year slash other year when there's a new management team, things of that nature. So when you think news we will use, think members, when you think impact, think community. Wonderful. Thank you. And any last minute questions that came into the chat, Kristen? No more questions. Thank you very much. Awesome. Wonderful. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Thank you so much, Emily. That was great information for everyone to use.